next up uh, for your uh, to really start thinking about solutions. Uh, one of the best things that happened in New York City uh, over the last couple of years um, has been the development of uh, the Cornell Tech uh, Center out on Roosevelt Island. And it, they did their grand opening the other day. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, and it's really beautiful. And uh, to talk to uh, 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 her beautiful center is the wonderful Deborah Estrin, uh, who uh, is, was this year our new uh, partner of the year, uh, because they came in and they're, they're going to help change things, drive things even better, faster, more. And uh, so, uh, so without any further ado, are you ready, Deb? De Deborah. I Sorry. told him I wouldn't speak if he called me Deb. Okay, do you, do you want to? <laughs> I'm up on this stage to declare, don't call me Deb. That's what I'm here for. Uh, which of these should I use? This better? I think that's yeah. much better. Excellent. Okay. Um, coordination. So I uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, giving me the stage, calling me Deborah, and uh, giving me a chance to talk about uh, Cornell Tech. I joined Cornell Tech. Five years ago in January, which is when we opened our doors to students, we had one hired faculty at the time, which was me. Uh, we've grown to uh, 25 to 30, depending how you count. We had about six students that first uh, uh, beta semester, and we now have uh, 250 master's students in this, uh, in this year, uh, around 50 PhD students. And uh, we will keep growing, because this is just uh, the beginning of phase one. So what are we? Uh, we're really excited to be here to help make New York City a very vi vibrant tech center. And one of my uh, particular purposes and roles is to help make it really make New York City the vibrant uh, center for health tech in particular. So we are a shiny object in the middle of the East River. Uh, the East River, which is actually an estuary. And if you come to our campus and you can view both sides of that estuary from so many places in these gorgeous glass buildings, you see the tide going in and out uh, and the water flowing in both directions. And it really is a marvelous uh, place. And we look forward to seeing you at seminars and talks uh, and events. So beyond this sort of, as I like to say, this attention getting youngest sibling in a very esteemed uh, Cornell family, because of course we're not new uh, Cornell to New York City. There's Wild Cornell um, that's uh, across the half a river from us, and there's Cornell Ithaca. We are all faculty who are all part of Cornell with our affiliated uh, uh, de uh, departments uh, in Ithaca. But what are we in this uh, brand new campus? We have the Bloomberg Center, which is where the um, master's programs are run and where our PhD students and faculty sit, as well as postdocs. I'll say a little bit more about that. And then the bridge building, which is right on the uh, across a small quad, is uh, where we also use some of this space. But it's a place for industrial uh, incubators, accelerators, innovation groups uh, who are starting to move in there. And uh, hopefully in not too long, there'll be a co-working uh, space as well. So smarter ventures would have a, a place to be there. So um, we are a digital campus that started under uh, Mayor Bloomberg and the uh, competition that was run many years ago and Cornell and the Technion won that competition uh, to create a digital uh, uh, campus, a campus focus on digital uh, as a center of innovation in New York City that's very externally engaged and that we are. So if you look at societal trends, driven by digital technology. Uh, we think of them in this way, and our, our faculty and our PhD students are all pursuing these trends, roughly populating four areas of research. AI, of course, data modeling, security and privacy, and then sort of grouped together, HCI and social computing. But we pursue these trends, and we pursue those areas without uh, deep departmental silos. So we have faculty from computer science, information science, electrical engineering, and operations research, as well as business and law. And we've now grown to run uh, seven master's programs. And, but we all sit together, our faculty meetings are together, our PhD students uh, all collaborate with one another. And as I said, we have about 250. It was working. I think I got, I pressed on the wrong window. Give me a second. Help. Sorry. Uh, anyway, what you'll see in this next picture is a fun picture 
uh, that uh, happened on our orientation day when we were, uh, all of our uh, master students were coming for orientation and it's a little bit of a where's Waldo somewhere in the middle of that crowd in our big auditorium is uh, Mayor Bloomberg who made a surprise visit to welcome them to the building, uh, to the campus that he was responsible for uh, creating and to the building which he named after his daughters that is actually called the Bloomberg Center. In, within Cornell Tech, I started the Health Tech Hub, and at the center of that hub is a master's program. And it's a two-year master's program in health tech, and we train people in deep uh, uh, technologies. They basically get the equivalent of a master's degree in computer science, but all of their project work is done in the context of health and healthcare. So we are training technologists, but you guys all know that doing technology for healthcare is a different beast than doing technology for other forms of consumer care. And we want our uh, students to both learn the language. They take numbers of courses at Weill Cornell as well about healthcare system. They do practical with clinicians and get a lot of exposure, but they do all of their technical projects in the context of, of health and uh, healthcare as well. And our mission is basically to train these young computer and information and data scientists to be able to build technologies that meaningfully serve patients, clinicians, and uh, healthcare systems, with a particular emphasis on uh, the patient uh, experience uh, at, this, at this time. I was once asked by um, somebody from the MIT Harvard uh, 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 side of the world, you know, MIT and Harvard have been working on this for decades. Why do you think you'll be able to move the needle at all? And in part, it's because we are focusing on patients' problems and individuals' problems more than systems' problems. Now, you can't ignore systems' problems. You can't get anything purchased or used if you would ignore the system problem. So we're trying to really educate our, 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 our students to understand the system, but where they're focusing, by and large, is on um, individuals' uh, I'm doing it again. Okay. The cornerstone of all of our master's programs uh, across computer science and health tech and business and law is that the students work together in a studio curriculum. So about 25 to 30 percent of their time every semester that they're there is spent in mixed groups uh, and uh, doing uh, product development and uh, product iteration. And I mention this in particular because every summer we ask around for people to propose how might we challenge us. And the students then uh, prioritize, rank those challenges their very first week on campus, and they get matched in these mixed groups to those challenges. So I ran a studio uh, this past semester that had 13 teams in it. And 10 of those teams, which meant 50 students, were all working on health-related uh, problems. IBM, MITRE, we had two from Lilly, uh, Wild Cornell, Memorial Sloan Kettering, Oscar, Samsung, Hale Health, and Grocery sh uh, Ships all had how might we's that the students matched on and went through an iterative product uh, development with involved prototyping and a lot of mentoring from the uh, corporate advisor, but also from designers and technologists uh, from around the city. We have our open studio on December 14th, and all of those product challenges, both the, the 10 that were health-related and the other uh, 35 or so that are not health related um, will all be uh, highlighted there. I just want to give you a couple of uh, examples and to say that, so around the summer, if you're interested in getting your how might we in that competition for students to possibly uh, take on, we'd love to hear from you. Send me email. In addition, our students do a two-semester deeper dive specialization coming up this, this next spring semester and in the fall, and every year that's the same. And that's another opportunity uh, to engage more deeply with students. Not something that's directly on your roadmap, something that's important to you but off roadmap, that you're not going to expend resources on, but that you'd really like to see uh, explored. Here's an example of one of those off roadmap two semester projects, just finishing up uh, working on a magic mirror and actually using open source implementation of software and hardware initially, and then they evolved the system to do, uh, to take technology from the mole mapper uh, research kit application, and they evolved it so 
exploring the interaction, a daily interaction with the bathroom mirror as a place in which to do uh, ongoing monitoring of things like uh, facial moles. But you can imagine a whole bunch of other interactions that might happen there. And they refer to it now as reflective health. Another example of uh, one of our uh, student projects that that launched last year as a, and spun out as a startup when the students graduated. Both Tim and Sonia uh, were health tech graduates, and they have data logs. So it's an AI-powered data pipeline. Started off looking particularly at healthcare data, but now they're more general. And sometimes it goes in the more general direction and applies to health, and sometimes uh, in that other direction. And then finally, we also have a very innovative postdoc program where uh, people who have completed their PhDs and want to do a postdoc, not to build up their academic CV, but to actually start a company and build a product based off of their deeper technical uh, uh, knowledge and what they developed in their, in their graduate work. And one of our great examples of this is uh, Neve, who, uh, along with Chris Mason, who's at Royal Cornell, started Biosha, uh, which does uh, actual uh, uh, DNA, very advanced DNA sequencing for hospital uh, bacterial infection uh, surveillance. So I just wanted to uh, thank you again for having me on stage. I look forward to meeting many of you uh, over these coming years. And we have students who do internships, projects, and it's great to be here. Thank you, Deborah. That was fantastic. And, and what I, I love about what they're doing is, you know, I was I was on the the bio meds and eds committee at certain points, and, and it's just amazing to see these things come to fruition and to have such great leaders uh, coming uh, from all over the place.